Hey there, and welcome back to another video. This is Thousand Ant, where we give you devlogs, Unity tutorials, and indie game dev advice. I'm Matt Shell, and in this video, I want to do a little exploration of the idea of independence in indie game development, the ways that that manifests, what it means in 2021, and how we can think about how we want to kind of position ourselves as developers and creators in relationship to it. Let's check it out. So this is something that's been kind of floating around in my head and I wanted to kind of take a moment to discuss here, which is the idea of independence and independence as it pertains to indie game creators, right? What does it mean? What does it mean in 2021? Are we talking about a creative posture? Are we talking about a business structure, right? A business relationship? How does it relate to things like team size, budget, lifestyle? There's a whole mess of concepts and questions tied up in this idea of being an independent game creator or independent game developer that I think are interesting to kind of tease apart, unpack, and I don't think there's any one right answer, right? But maybe this helps us all to think about what we wanna get out of this, how we wanna to relate to this, and maybe be a little bit more clear about what kind of indie game developer we wanna be, right? So I think the first thing is, why do people wanna be independent game developers, right? I think there's a certain number of people who just really like the idea of quitting their job and doing something that could theoretically be a replacement job that seems fun, it's connected to video games, it's creative, there's some idea of freedom attached to it. And I think that, I don't wanna say that this is a mistake because there is obviously a reality to it, but I think that what some people miss is the idea that being an independent creator is an escape from business realities and responsibilities. In fact, I think it's kind of the opposite. When you become a independent small business person, you now have all these things, taxes, accounting, marketing, contracts and legal questions, customer support, a whole host of new responsibilities that nobody else is gonna take care of for you. And actually, I think that if you're somebody who's just like, oh, I'm not really interested in all that business stuff, I really just wanna make games, you might be more comfortable in a bigger company. Working in a bigger company, you have HR people, a legal department, and accountants and so on to make sure that the taxes and everything get paid. In some ways, it's easier to work for a big company because there's all those specialized functions that get taken care of. You know, I just spent part of my morning today talking to my German accountant, my German accountant needs to talk to my American accountant, you know, where do I pay taxes, all these kind of things that in a bigger company, you're like, no, just they take the taxes out of my salary, no problem, right? So I think that that idea of freedom, you know, freedom also comes with risk and responsibility. And I think on this question, somebody who's given good advice is Jason De La Roca, who has given some talks at GDC, about game funding, getting investment in your games, how that all works, which I recommend checking out if you're considering being an indie game developer. And he talks about the idea of the indie entrepreneur, right? And this is somebody who is both trying to make games with a innovative, creative perspective and trying to be a business person and do business and be successful and generate a profit and build a studio or a career long-term, right? I think that that is probably a, I'm not gonna say it's a better position to be in, but that's kind of how I identify myself, right? I'm somebody who's interested both in the business side and the creative side of development. And I think if you're only interested in one, for example, if you're only interested in the creative side, you may actually be better being a part of somebody else's studio instead of trying to start your own studio because actually what you're doing is starting a business, right? So I think that this, idea of the indie entrepreneur as somebody who is pursuing this both as a business and as a creative endeavor or, or as somebody with a unique perspective and is not just trying to do kind of me too, clone, kind of schlockware, shovelware kind of product, which could be a valid 
approach if you're just a pure business person. You're like, I just want to be in the games business. I don't really care what we make as long as it makes money, right? Maybe making the 900th whatever clone could be a viable strategy that works. I actually don't think it really works anyway, right? But, but that would be kind of like the pure business approach. And then the pure creative approach is like, oh, I'm not interested in money. I don't care about taxes and marketing. I just want to make games, right? Well, probably you're better off either with a hobby or being an artist, right? Maybe you can get some government funding, depending on where you live. But if you're somebody who wants to kind of do this long term in a sustainable way, then this kind of idea of indie entrepreneurship is a valuable one to think about. And just to try to position yourself, which, which one of those kind of quadrants are you in? I'll link to his talk in the description down below because I think it gives, gives a lot of food for thought. I think the other question then flowing from that is about the size of production and the scope of the game and how many people and how much time you need to make it. This is something I'm directly wrestling with right now. I'm actually in a process. I've brought on a, a part-time producer to work on the project with me to do some research around uh, market size, for this type of game, what are the possible outcomes in terms of revenue? And let's make sure that we don't have a budget that's bigger than those possible outcomes, right? If the biggest possible game similar to ours only made you know, $100,000, we don't wanna to plan to have a budget of $200,000, those kind of questions, right? And in that comes the question of team size and about collaboration, which also connects to independence, right? A lot of people have the idea of independence there's a kind of a romance with this idea of the solo developer or the very small team working in their bedroom on their own schedule, pursuing their unique idiosyncratic creative vision. This was all pushed forward by Indie Game the Movie, right? Which I think has kind of set the narrative for a lot of people in a way that maybe wasn't totally helpful. But depending on the scale of game you wanna make, you may need a team and now you're in a different world of independence, right? I have this experience that I lead a company and having people work for you is not that different from working for other people. You're accountable to these people. You need to make sure that they have enough money to live and that the project doesn't go bankrupt and that you need to, you need to show up for meetings and get things done on time so that they can be unblocked in their work and make decisions. It's not that different from working either as part of a team or working for a boss, right? You're still accountable to other people, even if you are the leader and the one making decisions. This is a thing that I think not everybody who doesn't have experience managing knows, but you're still connected to these people and you still have to show up on time and get stuff done and you can't just go to the beach or whatever. So this romance of the indie solo dev, right, I think is, I understand it because it's this idea of, of total freedom and doing whatever you want. But of course, there's a narrow range of things that you can successfully do and make as one person, let's say over a two or three year period, right? If we're gonna give what's like a reasonable time frame to make a game. Now, Jake Burkett from Gray Alien Games has made a great blog post saying, you're taking too long to make your game, right? Which I think there's a valuable perspective there. But a lot of that is because we have people who looked at their favorite Nintendo game, which was made by 40 or 80 or 100 people working full time, and then they themselves wanna work as one or two or three people and make a game that's similar in some ways, but they're trying to do it with a 10th or a 20th of the team size, and then we get into a lot of complicated stuff, right? So I think that thinking about, are you in this because you wanna work by yourself in your bedroom, or are you in this because you wanna build a team and a company and build something bigger, I think is also a really important question, right? I have kind of come down on one side of this answer of saying, yeah, I wanna have a team. I wanna make things that are bigger than one or two or three people can make. And that means I need to bring people together. I need to manage them and make sure they have things like healthcare. I need to secure funding to do that. I need to secure long-term funding. So it's not just like we have the money now, but then we're about to go broke. And that is just a whole different world of things from making game design or art direction decisions. <laughs> but then you also need to make those decisions, right? So it's, it, it's you know, it's complicated. 
I don't know, what got me thinking about this was I was looking at, right now there's this kind of meme out in the world of van life, right? These people going and living in their vans with their dog and driving around and posting on Instagram, these kind of like fantasy descriptions of this idea of freedom, right? It's a, uh, and it appeal, I like it. I watch these YouTube videos about people customizing their vans and living in their vans. And it's a weird thing, right? But it's, it's, there's something very appealing about it, especially to someone like me who feels tied into a lot of commitments and responsibilities. I also have kids, you know, I have taxes and complicated stuff that I have to take care of that I don't enjoy doing. So the idea of like living in a van and this freedom, right, is very, there's some part of it that's very appealing and it's a kind of an escape fantasy. I think a lot of people are looking at indie game development through a similar lens, right? They're like, I'm gonna be able to quit my job and just make games. Wow, you know? And I get it. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it, right? But I'm here to report <laughs> that the reality is a little bit different from the fantasy, right? That once you start to make anything bigger than the smallest kind of solo dev appropriately scoped project, you're kind of back in that world of commitments, responsibilities, complexity, accountability that is different from the kind of fantasy of the laptop at the beach and just doing whatever you want all the time, right? So I just wanna kind of shine a light on that and maybe prompt a conversation for people who are outside looking in, thinking, oh yeah, being an indie game developer, that would be amazing. And then people who are inside, you know, experiencing the reality and saying, hey, actually we still have to make money and we're still stressed out and trying to deal with all this reality, right? I think it's a good thing to just be open about and communicate. And I also see some people kind of selling the fantasy, right? Selling the idea that like, yeah, it's so amazing. I'm just doing whatever I want and you can do it too if you, you know, pay me some money to teach you how to do it. I think let's be real about what's what this is really like. It's also complicated just like uh, every other part of human existence. And, uh, and the, it's great in many ways, but it's also difficult in many ways. And let's be open and honest about what those are as we, uh, as we all, you know, share our stories and make decisions about our lives, right? So hopefully you found that interesting, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, maybe a wild rant there, but I think it's worth talking about. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Drop a dislike if you didn't. Give me a comment. Does this resonate in your world? Did you have the, the fantasy idea of indie dev and then run into the reality? Or are you still looking at the fantasy thinking, yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and do whatever I want. Let me know in the comments down below. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And as always, just thank you so much for spending a little bit of your precious time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.